All right, as a way to practice using our equations for angular kinematics, I'm going to talk about uh, a famous and just wild experiment, uh, the Fizeau experiment. Uh, so originally, uh, Leon Foucault and Hippolyte Fizeau uh, collaborated on experiments to try to measure the speed of light with a rotating mirror. Uh, and then they had some sort of falling out and uh, Hippolyte went off on his own uh, to try to measure the speed of light as follows. So form a beam of light and it will path, pass between one gap and the tooth of a gear, travel back and forth a large distance and then return through the next gap. And you could tell if this was lined up and working, basically, by whether you saw light or not. Um, and it could change the angular speed of this gear as it's rotating uh, and measure how fast it was rotating as well. Uh, and then the distance from this apparatus to the plane mirror could be made relatively large and then uh, in Fizeau's experiment, it was, it was set up on Mount Mothra, uh, so a, a good distance away. All right, so we have that arrangement. Uh, we're given that the radius of the wheel is five uh, centimeters, uh, and then uh, the distance from the wheel to the plane mirror on Mount Mothra uh, is 500 meters. So it's a round trip of a kilometer for this beam of light. So just a wild, wild, wild experiment uh, going on in Paris. All right, so we want to get the angular speed of the wheel. Uh, well, we will get back the average angular speed, assuming that it's constant over the time that you're making this measurement. So that is angular displacement over a time interval and from the information in the problem the gear will have rotated uh, from one tooth gap to the next tooth gap so that is 2 pi radians over 500 1.26 times 10 to the minus 2 radians, or rads. And the time interval for it to do that, if you see this beam of light on the return path, is uh, the round trip for light divided by the speed of light. And of course, they were doing this the other way around. You know how fast that the wheel is rotating, and you know the distance, and you use that to find the speed of light. At any rate, we'll use the information that we have. So round trip is a kilometer, twice 500 meters, and speed of light, now known, 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, gives us 3 and 3 repeating, 10 to the minus 6 seconds. It's a very, very fine time interval. Uh, and then all that together gives us omega of 3.77 times 10 to the 3 radians per second. Probably better answer to three, say 3.8. Uh, and then linear speed is the angular speed of the wheel times the radius of the wheel. So V will be R omega, and you find that that wheel is going something like 190 meters per second, which is just crazy. Uh, so that's nearly 400 miles per hour for that point <laughs> at the edge uh, of the gear. Uh, so beams of light shooting across Paris uh, 
a gear uh, that I imagine has got to be uh, rotating at a dangerous, dangerous speed. Uh, I'm not sure that's near like the uh, tensile strength of the steel that made up the gear, but that would certainly make me nervous. Uh, and they were able to make you know, a measurement of the speed of light, improved over time and can actually do it much easier with uh, some knowledge of astron astronomy. So like measuring uh, when you have the moons of Jupiter first coming out uh, from behind Jupiter, uh, you know that orbital motion in some detail because it's just you know, these great Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Uh, but Jupiter is at different distances away. So the time you actually observe it depends on the light travel time. Uh, so that's how, uh, in a more comfortable and leisurely manner, you can measure the speed of light as opposed to making wheels rotate 400 miles per hour. But fun, fun experiments, one of my favorites, the Fizzo experiment.